I'm joined now by Ashley Bratcher, actress in the movie Unplanned. She plays Abby Johnson, who we've had a number of times on the show. I've been trying to get you as well. It's fantastic to meet you. Thanks so much for joining us here at, at CPAC and getting up early and enduring the security <laughs> line. Uh, it's a, a, a on time even. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Maybe a little later next time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> it's a. It, I'm not what's known as a morning person myself. So me I either. joke that I have a middle of the night show because it starts at 6 a.m. So for me, that's <laughs> that's a. I think of myself as a late night host more than a morning host. I agree. So let's talk about the movie and let's talk about your your journey. Uh, tell us a little bit about Unplanned, Broad Strokes, and then I'll, I'll get into your involvement. Okay, so Unplanned is the true story of Abby Johnson. Yeah. Abby was a uh, clinic director for Planned Parenthood. She worked at Planned Parenthood for eight years, facilitated around 22,000 abortions. She had just won Employee of the Year, and mm. uh, sh shortly after that, she was called back to assist on an ultrasound-guided abortion. And it was during that procedure that she saw for the very first time uh, that there was a fully formed baby in the womb that was fighting for its life to survive. And she realized everything Planned Parenthood had told her was a lie. It was not a clump of cells. Yes. She witnessed this baby be wrung like a dishcloth as it was vacuumed out in an abortion. And after that, she was completely devastated. And shortly thereafter, she left Planned Parenthood, and she's now one of the most outspoken pro-life voices of our time. So they're making the movie Unplanned, and it's got a real Hollywood budget. It's a real uh, Hollywood production company behind it. This is a serious theatrical release, and uh, you get the offer to play Abby Johnson, and then a whirlwind begins for you. Right, and I knew none of that. I mean... Even the initial casting breakdown that went down was so confidential. It didn't say who was making it. It didn't have Abby's last name. I mean, there was very, very little information. So, so, so what did you what did you know? I, I, that's it. I mean, I knew that Abby was a real person, um, and because I had auditioned, I looked her up, so I was familiar with her story. But weeks had gone by, and I hadn't heard anything. So, you mm. know, in Hollywood terms, that's basically, oh, you didn't get the part. Yes. Well, weeks go by, and then they call me at the last minute, and they said, hey, uh, the role is yours. Can you get on a plane in four hours for eight weeks in Oklahoma? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I convinced them to give me five hours at least to, to <laughs> pack for all that time. That was good. That, that's hard bargaining. The president would be very proud. <laughs> just, just, just good, solid negotiation there. <laughs> so you think you're, you're going to a movie. Uh, you know the movie's about uh, someone who's... A, a Planned Parenthood representative. That's all you know. What are your politics like at the time? Uh, well, before I knew Abby's testimony, um, I was middle of the road. I considered myself pro-life, sure. but uh, I didn't think that I had the right to tell anyone else what to be or sure. what to do. And um, after I heard her story, I really finally kind of understood and it sank in. I started doing more research about uh, you know, when does life begin? What is the science behind it? And I developed a firmer stance that, no, there's a life that we're not protecting, that we're allowing to be innocently killed in the United States. So, and this is remarkable because this is the power of, of Hollywood. And so I'm from Hollywood. I'm from Los Angeles. And Andrew Breitbart, our founder, who passed away seven years ago today, uh, he was someone who was from Hollywood, was a knee-jerk liberal. Uh, he was always pro-life because he was adopted. So that was a, a, he had no choice. He always said, I can't even debate it. I'm, yeah. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't uh, for this topic. And uh, the, the power of storytelling to we're the right we've we've such great arguments we're not as good at the storytelling as the left is and so you're a part of this now so you're a part of like it or not a a major effort to try our hand at this sort of storytelling that the left has per per yeah. perfected yeah i completely agree um i heard a quote a couple of weeks ago that says uh storytellers are the ones that can, cha can change culture not lawmakers that's right and i think that's so incredibly true especially with putting out a good film that gets a attention and starts a conversation that can potentially shift our culture like it already is right now and so unplanned again is the movie which we've talked about we'll continue to talk about it's coming up here when is the release march 29th march 20 march 29th so uh we'll, we'll continue to plug uh, away at it this is one where you guys have to be supportive of you have to walk the walk on this one uh, ashley bratcher is with me she's the star she plays abby johnson who is well familiar to those of us in the breitbart news uh audience so uh, talk to us a little bit about it must have been so intense uh, filming uh, something like this it's such an intense subject matter i mean this the heaviest subject life the heaviest subject matter on the planet yeah it definitely was i mean from day one until the very last day of shooting i'm pretty sure i cried every single day oh i mean God. it was just required of me because i was filming these really intense emotional scenes and um, abby nearly died from her ru-46 abortion uh where she did the chemically induced abortion 
And so that was a grueling process, not only because it took eight hours to shoot one day, and then we went into overtime. Mm. So I've been crying for eight hours all day, one day. And then they're like, okay, we got to stop. We're going to come back and pick it up in the morning. I'm like, oh my God, how am I ever going to get through this? Because it was like that every single day. And because I didn't have a lot of time to prepare, uh, I leaned into my faith. And every morning I just woke up and I prayed. And before every scene, I just prayed and I thought, God, give me strength to get through this because I can't do it without you. So, so give me your background because this is so crucial that you have to. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I have some exposure to this in Hollywood, but the drawing on the level of emotion you have to summon to do take after take of these scenes is you. You, you don't know it until you, you witnessed it, but you relied on your faith to get through it. Yeah, I did. I primarily re- relied on my faith and the guidance of the Holy Spirit um, to just really feed me what I needed to be present in the moment. But that also stems from my training uh, in my craft and I'm a Meisner trained actor. So the mantra is to live truthfully under imaginary circumstances. So I'm taught to uh, analyze and research everything. So if I'm going through an RU-46 abortion that I need to know like at least three things that I can include in my performance that, that would happen during that time. Like is it abdominal pain? Is it vomiting? Um, is it dizziness? Like, what are the three things that I can include as an impediment in my performance and know that that's truthful without clouding my head and be like, oh, I have to do this. I just need to know it, the situation well enough that I can react in the moment and believe that it's really happening to me. So, so the Meisner method, that's, there's, there's like two or three major uh, schools of, of mm-hmm. thought for, for acting. So, so how does that, well, w- what comprises that particular approach? I would just say more than anything, most people who practice Meisner say that it's all about being present in the moment. Right. And so in my training, that's what it shifted more than anything because it puts your focus on the other person and what you you want to get from them or what they're giving you. So your entire performance is based on the other person and not yourself. And I mean, it changed my life in in real life too because I'm all of a sudden paying more attention in my conversations. I'm not thinking constantly about what I'm going to say. I'm listening to other people more. And that's really what good acting is, is it's listening and reacting as opposed to saying what you want to say. So uh, one of the questions I had uh, jotted down was I was going to ask you how you prepare for a role like this, but apparently you you don't really prepare for it. You just... Uh, you, you, you just go in head first. Well, with this, I did. I did have to go in head first. I will say that I was working 24 7 because even when I was on set, I was watching Lila Rose videos. Sure. I mean, I was sure. watching all of Abby's videos online. I was uh, researching Dr. Levitino's videos, who's a former abortionist. And so I would literally, I remember I'd be taking a shower and my laptop would be like right outside the shower. I'd be listening to yeah. whatever that was. And then I'd have. Abby's audio book playing in one ear. Wow. It was really uh, just jumping straight in because there was no time. I had to just lean on my instincts and trust God. That's in- incredible. And so have you done any other media? How are you being received? Because this is such a, uh, this is an issue that is so much of Hollywood are single issue voters on this issue. And they're the other side. They're they're the, the ab- abortion absolutists. Yeah, you know, Hollywood has this, such a strong opinion, apparently, but I haven't had any mainstream media reach out to me. <laughs> we put it out there. We said, hey, CNN, like, give us a call. Fox has been really great to us. That's I've been good. on Fox several times. That's really and good They've given us a great platform to talk about it, and they just keep having us on. Um, but we've reached out to mainstream media, and I'm not opposed to doing it. Like, you don't have to agree with me to talk with me. We can have right. a civil conversation. Like, a, it, it's okay to disagree. Um but at the same time, like, let's be respectful each other, of each other. Uh, again, Ashley Bratcher is with me. She plays Abby Johnson in the upcoming movie, Unplanned. You'll be hearing a lot about that uh, at Breitbart uh, in the days and weeks to come as we continue to... to look, th- this is a big one. This is a- Abby's real-life story from being a part of thousands and thousands of abortions. And now uh, this movie comes out where she is one of the leading advocates, March 29th release. This is the one of the leading advocates for the pro-life movement. And Ashley, this is just, you couldn't have picked a more amazing moment for this movie to come out because <laughs> the country is shifting so radically. And, and why is the country shifting? Because I think we have clarity and where the Democratic left stands on this issue, which is Absolutely. absolutism on abortion, no matter what, yeah. to, the very, to the day of delivery, if not beyond. Uh, at the same time, you have science evolving into such a way, which uh, I was lucky enough to, uh, my wife had a baby last year, and you know the first ultrasound is, it the, yeah. is a heartbeat, is pounding away. Uh, the child is a child. And, and some of this science, some of this clarity that we're seeing from the left and where they really stand, it, it, it does... It's changing minds to the pro-life side. 
I agree. I mean, the March for Life this past year was based on uh, pro-life is pro-science. Yes. Unique from day one. That's right. And it's becoming harder and harder for people to support their pro-choice stance and deny science. Yes. I mean, you just, you can't, it's really hard to deny scientific evidence. D- d- <laughs> does that play into the movie? Uh, it does. I mean, in the sense that Abby had that revelation, yes. but that Planned Parenthood is very deceptive about it. Sure. And, and Planned Parenthood, Abby talks about a little bit about how they try to sell Christians. That in particular, is that you and I are both Christians, and there's a lot of Christians in the audience, that they try to make a sales pitch. They, they give you the talking points so that you can convince Christians that abortion's okay. Uh, Abby actually said she went to a church during her time working there where um, she was praised for being in Planned Parenthood. Yeah. And it was just so deceitful. But another shocking statistic to, is that about 60% of women who have abortions identify as Christian. Wow. So it really is an issue within the church, too, that we're not talking about, which is is really worrisome. It, it is worrisome. And I, I go to church weekly, and there's a, it's a Catholic church, so the abortion does come up, probably more than any other political issue. But it's not a constant. It's not a constant thing you're hearing about week in and week out. And I think that we let this narrative slip away on the right a little bit, but we're, we're clearly making progress. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think this movie is going to do a big service. Again, Unplanned comes out March 29th. Tell us something surprising about the movie or the process or anything in general you like, or, or even about yourself. Just, just anything on your mind. Well, uh, I think people who might not be familiar with my story, the most shocking thing that I learned happened four days after I had arrived on set. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, you know, they offered me the role. I had four hours, five hours to get out to Oklahoma. I hit the ground running. I also have a child. I have an eight-year-old little boy. So my son and my husband and my sister knew because I needed her help. And um, they were the only ones who knew that I had left for the project. And so when I got to Oklahoma, it was was straight into pre-production. I had 52 wardrobe changes. They were coloring my hair. It was insane. So the fourth day that I was there, my mom finally called me. I'm like, oh, I haven't told my mom where I am. And uh, so I wanted to explain to her what what I was doing, but I was very cautious because my mom had told me she'd had an abortion when she was in high school. And so I wanted to make sure that uh, I didn't, she didn't feel like I was judging her or condemning her with this movie, that this wasn't some movie that was just judging all women who'd had abortions or abortionists. And I knew that she'd be emotional when I started talking about it, but... As I went on to describe everything, she just completely lost it. I mean, wow. she's on the phone, and I can just feel her spirit crushed. And she said, Ashley, I need to tell you something that you never knew before. What you don't know is that when I was 19, I was in the clinic for the second time, and I had been called back by um, the team, and I went in. I was on the table in the clinic, and a very pregnant nurse came in and examined me, and I got really sick, and I knew that I couldn't go through with it, and I got up, and I chose to have you. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and um, I never knew that. I mean, I never, ever knew that. Whoa. Jumping into this. I had already accepted this role to play Abby Johnson, who is such a pro-life advocate. I mean, she's really well-known in the pro-life world, and she's fighting But you life. almost and weren't here to it, be able to play it. I was intended to be aborted, yeah. Yeah, and it's all because wow. my mom just had this feeling. She got sick, and she didn't think she could do it. Yeah, it was crazy. So I'm on the phone with my mom, and... Um, she tells me that, and I'm in the middle of having my hair colored. I'm in a salon. I, mean, yes. I literally have. I don't know if you've ever seen women in salons, but I like had like aluminum foils. I, to I've I've been witness uh, probably more often than I'd like. It is, uh, yeah. It's it's a funny. It's, it was a, it's a, a funny, funny look for a couple yeah. hours. So then I'm sitting there in a salon as I'm talking to her, looking like a crazy person, yeah. hysterically crying, and everyone's like, oh, I, 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 I got to tell you, just to full disclosure, I'm having a hard time keeping <laughs> together right now, and we just met. So it's I can't imagine what that must have been like. Yeah. Yeah. I, I needed some time to process it. I took a couple of days before I called her back, and my parents are divorced, so I actually called my dad in the meantime. Yeah. And just said, hey, dad, you know, like, why did nobody tell me this? You know, I'm grown. Mm. I have my own child. I yes. Mean, Nobody told me this. So, well, he had found out from my sister when I left what I was doing, and he had been emotionally wrecked as soon as he found out what I was doing because he'd never told anybody in his entire life that he was with her the day that she went to go get abortion, an abortion for me. And uh, he just said, you know, there's, I, there was never a right time. Like, when do you tell your daughter that you intended yes. to abort her? And then he said that 
they thought it was their only option. He had just graduated high school. People were like, you're too young to have a baby. You can't do this. And they didn't have enough money for the abortion. So he went and pawned a family heirloom and it happened to be a shotgun. Oh my goodness. So a pawn shotgun was what was intended to pay that was gonna the death fund, penalty for me. Yeah. That was going to fund your death. And yeah. he said, you're here making this movie. Yep. That's unbelievable. Yeah, it was it was really a lot of confirmation for my dad too because um, he was kind of an in between believer, but it sealed the deal for him to say, "This is just evidence to me that God is real and He has a plan from the moment of conception, and that you are evidence of that." I, uh, it, if that doesn't move people, <laughs> I, I don't know. That's the best I got. It's the best we got here, folks. <laughs> A- Ashley Bratcher, it is. Uh, it's a treat to meet you. How did that? affect your your performance at all i mean it, it, it couldn't i i imagine that you could probably summon another gear after that well you know i didn't have a lot of time to process it and i still don't think to this day because i've been just going 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 that i really fully comprehend what all that means i mean yeah. you that just thinking about the life that you have you know you said you have a wife and a child yeah. and imagining that you know you could have never had that you yes. could, I would. I would have never had the chance never to have chance. this impact on the word. society, like uh, to experience love and grace, and I mean even hardship to overcome that. Of course, it, it's part of life. It is. So, well, I'm. I'm really grateful. I mean, a lot of people condemn my mom when she told me, and I thought this is crazy. No, I think she's courageous for telling me, and she's courageous for having me. She was she, exactly. She endured a lot and, of hardship and, to have me. And and uh, I'm not speaking on behalf of all Christians, but from my experience, and I think you're probably similar. Uh, we're much more focused on going forward than on dwelling on the past and judging the past. Or we would like if people see this movie and they maybe have, maybe the, uh, a few more lives like yours get saved, then that that's fantastic. Yeah, they, I completely even agree. if you've had an abortion, maybe you won't have another one. Yeah, we've we've encountered a lot of um, women and men who have approached us after these pre screenings we've had through the U.S. and said that. This has just brought me so much healing. I mean, sure. women and men just coming to me, crying, just streaming tears and hug me and say, you would not believe how much this is changing my life and this is helping me. And we realize that there, when people watch this movie, there are going to be a lot of people sitting in the audience that are going to have this open wound at the end of the movie. That's that right. are just like, where do I go from here? Um, one cool thing about the film is that we're putting in a, a card at the end that is going to have a number that you can text immediately and it will connect you with a counselor in your area. So if you need post-abortive counseling, sure. there'll be that option immediately and we have resources on the site. The site is going to become just nothing but abortion and post-abortive resources. Um, so we're really making sure that we're covering people that are affected by this issue and the movie once I've seen it. Well, actually, thanks for doing this. Thanks for doing the interview. Thanks for doing the movie. We're really looking forward to it, and hopefully you'll come back uh, yeah. closer to release date. I'd love that. Thanks great, for having me. Great to meet you, and uh, keep up the good work. <laughs> <laughs>